Number five. Hot pot. We take the train to his father's from the station just below the psych ward. Don't talk about drugs or gangsters. Don't talk about my small penis. Frank cautions me as we knock at the apartment door. His father's hair is thin. He has lots of golf trophies. Nobody makes hot pot like I do. Hooray. The instant he's whisked us into the plush environments of his condo on Nuns Island and introduced us to his belle lady, Yvonne, a woman of bones and haute couture. There is so much we cannot speak of. Frank's father chops, dices, slivers in the galley kitchen, and we don't talk about his ex-wife, his 20 years in jail, his son's 17th admission to the psych ward. No one asks about the record label Frank is trying to start or the movie he wants to shoot. I'm in town to give a reading at the Yellow Door. Adventure. Stories from a skate volume called Mainlining. Stories, eh? Frank's father pipes out. Used to read those myself back a ways. Liked them, what do you call them? Detective books? <laughs> that he did! Yvonne calls, perks up, slicking her skirt over her thighs and gleaming her brass teeth at us. Read them so fast, he did. Like you wouldn't even believe. <laughs> Cats and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he laughs. Action, action's where it's at now, boy. Frank is fiddling with the magazines he bought his laid out, opening and slamming the front covers of Shadowing on Eclipse Scientific America. Yup. A pot spitting with oil is being carried over our heads and placed on the overly long table. Now sit down, will ya, and let me show you kids the ropes. Ominously jovial, he instructs us in the art of spearing shrimp, dipping their coral curves into the vat, scooping gaudy hunks of peppers onto our plates, hefty rolls, then over and over again, thrusting the shrimp into that hot little bath. Frank sits at the forehead of the table like a misplaced patriarch, sporting that suit and a shiny look in his eyes. I want you to think it is the alcohol from the sex we had yesterday on his last hospital pass. An hour for 20 bucks in a hotel room on St. Aha. And most of that time he'd spent on lacing my 20 hole demonius. <sighs> and kind of pulling each lace out individually. His passion for the specificities, the boundaries of process. <sighs> Number six rhubarb pie with Miracle Whip. Olga runs the reading series from the basement of a community center in the McGill Ghetto. Each performer is introduced with the same flat Romanian irony. For a small donation, you can nibble on crackers, cookies, <laughs> sip lukewarm red rose in a styrofoam cup. Frank shows up late. I've just started to read my story of Barube at Cafe Chaos when he clomps down the stairs and crashes his way into the front row. Frank is wearing his duffel coat and a twill cap like Holden Caulfield. Olga glints disapprovingly at him over her glasses. I finish my tale about piano playing punk and sit down beside him amid a light fall of applause. Frank leans over to me, whispers in my ear, you're gorgeous, is what he says. He can be very cruel. I am prepared for tragedy, I think, disaster, even common rudeness, but not this little perfect moment, this generous rupture. Afterwards, as we walk to Café Etranger, I feed him scarlet fruit pie with cream on top, a swirl white as martyrdom. Vive la franc libre, he crows with his bad teeth, a glory full of half-chewed dessert. Love is a too tight seed in my heart then. It will burst and grow a tree and he will chop it down. Ugh. Hmm. Seven. Craft dinner with a scoop of margarine on top. Mmm. <gasps> Bugs in my mouth. You know when I knew I was white trash? We are crashed on the mattress in St. Ali, <laughs> scraps of tobacco what was the moment? to our skins. <laughs> I am staring at the yellow condom on the floor. He 
seed knotted inside it, a teaspoon of white, <laughs> Michelle, and I were cooking KD at oh my place. God. Michelle? I went out with her in high school. My Michelle, la, la, la. Frank whoops out. Oh! And we were using a um, wooden spoon for the large. Hey, that reminds me. When you were here last weekend, this girl picked me up at the beef tech and she asked me to spoon. Ooh, this is sexy. You know how fucked up I am? I thought she meant drugs, not, uh, you know. So this Marge was sliding down the noodles. You ever let a chick suck your tits, hippie Jesus? I let a guy blow me once. It was okay. You're too straight, aren't you? Geek girl, nerdy wordy, hold the row. You're a one in a million, yeah, that's what you are, why? You're a one in a million, babe, you're a shooting star, why? Frank likes singing Guns N' Roses, but he will never do the Axl Rose dance. Not even drunk on 30 records, not even if I beg him to. Eight, pierogies and onions in tomato sauce. Frank rode the Greyhound to Vancouver once, ten months before he died. Three and a half days of sleeping in the aisles and eating fries with squishy packets of mayo. The last time he tried to get to the coast had been in a $400 Chevy Impala that had broken down on the 401. He had had nothing to drink, and so he lay down in the middle of the highway and waited to be run over. And now he has steel bars in his legs. They give him a pirate limp that would have gone good with a suit, but it had been cut off him after the accident. Will I dump thawed pierogies into a pan, toss strands of onions on top, and douse the pale entanglements with a thick sauce? Frank yanks out his guitar and starts playing his latest song. Hello, dear friend, dear lover. It isn't about me. The song ends. I hear a chair bashing against the wall as Frank lunges forward to kiss me. The head of his guitar hitting my shoulder. His new hospital grown beard piercing my cheek. That song's not about you, he says. His kiss is puncturing me. Pierogi's barely surfacing beneath their dark pond of sauce. I already knew that, I said. Nine. Soup. Frank's best friend, Ricardo, has a mother called Maria. She likes to cook soup, he says. I shouldn't worry about it. There is snow everywhere in two mountains. March 1st, he had jumped. At the funeral, there were only inhospitable broccoli spears from making triscuits. Maria likes to make soup. She says it will cure anything. Even the sight of this, the doll-bodied Frank stuck into an old man's suit and my tears over him. She serves it on a tray. It is perfect. Slow steam from the bowl, sprigs of parsley, delicate sheets of bread. Of course, I just look at it. And at some point, it grows cold. 10, a bag of scones. My father made them, Frank tells me. Nothing in his fridge but mustard, milk, rolls of film, and a plastic bag of miniature scones scrunched tight as socks. He'll never eat them, I think. That way, they stay a gift. <laughs>